Welcome, let's talk about how to set up a basic FDS simulation. This video is targeted to people that are new to FDS. I would like to create a simulation setup of one of the McCaffrey plume experiments. This is just that we can work towards some goal. McCaffrey did run an experiment campaign studying purely buoyant diffusion flames. Some of the experimental results are collected in this report. It is available from the NIST publications homepage. I will provide a link in the video description. The goal of the McCaffrey experiments was to determine temperatures and velocities at the center line above a free burning gas flame. A couple different gas burner configurations were used, specifically differences in heat release. They are highlighted here in the legend. For the purpose of our simulation, I would like to focus on the 57.5 kW. A second document that we need is the FDS user guide. It is always a good idea to keep the user guide handy when you set up an FDS simulation. There's different ways how you can get to the FDS user guide. One of the easiest ways is that you look in the installation directory of FDS on your machine. You remember from the earlier video I created a directory that is called FDS691. This directory should be located on your system drive C, then programs, fire models and then whatever name you chose for the directory. In here you find the directory that is called FDS6. Inside this directory, FDS is located in the directory that is called bin. Two important directories in here are the documentation as well as examples. Navigate into the documentation directory and then further guides and release notes. Here you find a bunch of PDF files including the FDS user guide. You can also get to the user guide from the web page where you downloaded the installer. On the top right there is this blue link to GitHub. On the GitHub page navigate to the repository of the Fire Dynamics Simulator. If you scroll down on the right hand side there is a section called releases. Follow that link to get to a web page that contains all the stable FDS releases. I am interested here in the newest FDS 691. There is a bunch of assets related to this version, also a PDF for the FDS user guide. You can simply click on it and download it from here. In the installation video I demonstrated that we start FDS from the command line. Simply type in FDS and hit enter. This gives us some basic overview over the installed FDS version. Specifically important is the line revision that gives us the exact FDS version that has been installed. For your publications, be it your thesis, an article, conference contributions, posters, it is really important that you provide this version number with your work. FDS is a tool under constant development. If somebody wants to reproduce your work, it may be important that they get the exact same version that you have been using. Now we need to create an input file that we can tell FDS which specific setup we would like to simulate. I've created here a directory that I have already labeled 57 kW. The instructions are provided to FDS from a plain text file. You can simply create a new text document. Make sure that it is a plain text document. We do not want to have Word or anything else. I simply called the file McCaffrey 57 kW. Back in the FDS installation directory we can have a look at some of the examples. Just open any of the directories and then we see a bunch of input files. We note that the file names end with .fds. Maybe it's a good idea to name our file the same way. I renamed my file and added .fds. The input file that I've created is on the drive labeled E. The terminal however is on the drive labeled C. To navigate to the simulation directory, in the terminal I first need to change to the different drive. In my case I type E colon and hit enter. Here at the top in the address line we can simply right click and copy the address. In the terminal again we type CD to change the directory and right click to paste the path. Now let's have a look at the contents of this directory. With the command dir, dir, we get a list of the contained files. Type dir and hit enter. Strangely enough our FDS input file is now called mccaffrey 57 kilowattfdstxt However, we do not see the .txt in our explorer window. The reason is that Windows has an option to hide known file endings. For example, .txt would be a known file ending. This can be adjusted from the explorer window. Click on view and then on options. In the second tab, view, the fourth checkmark toggles if known file endings will be hidden or not. Simply click on it to deactivate this function and hit apply. We see now that also in the explorer window the full file name is presented. This is not really a big issue as long as you provide the full file name to FDS. However, I personally like it better if I can see the full file names. So we can rename it again to remove the txt. For example, in the terminal again I type FDS and then the file name mccaffrey underscore 57 kilowatt dot FDS. If I hit enter it will complain that the file does not exist. If I add the dot txt the file works. However, now FDS complains that the input file was not set up correctly which is obvious there is nothing inside the file. This was just to demonstrate as long as you provide the complete file name FDS is able to use it. Still I will now change the file name and remove the .txt. Now we need to open the file in a plain text editor. You can use the editor that comes with Windows. You can also download Notepad++ or Atom or any other text editor. I like to use Atom but it doesn't make any difference. Use whatever text editor you like as long as it is not a word processor like Microsoft Word. Into this input file we will now write the instructions that will define our simulation setup. 
The different instructions are organized in name lists. Each name list starts with an ampersand character. This is then followed by four capital letters and the name list ends with a slash. Parameters that are provided for a name list need to be wrapped in the ampersand with four capital letters and the slash. We can then write the name of the parameter, equal sign and the value that is associated with it. Each name list can get multiple parameters. Basics on how to set up an FDS input file are also provided in the FDS user's guide. I strongly recommend that you take a look into the user guide in chapter 2, writing an FDS input file. In the beginning, the basic structure of an FDS input file is discussed. Alright, now let's start setting up our first input file. The input file starts with the head name list and ends with the tail. All the instructions to FDS are to be written between these two. We can provide a couple of parameters to the head name list. The first one would be a title. The parameter name is title in all capital letters, followed by an equal sign. This is then followed by quotation marks to indicate that we would like to provide a string. As a title, I would like to choose something human readable that makes sense in our case. For example, McCaffrey 57.5 kilowatt. So what we also need to do is to set up a domain. The computational domain is defined by the mesh name list. So let's try out if this input file already works. In the terminal I'm now typing in fds space and then the file name. Now the output looks different. We still get an overview of which fds version has been used, but more information has been added. For example, we see now a job title. This is information we provided to the head name list. We also see an overview over a couple of time steps and the simulation time it corresponds to. Finally, there is a stop message telling us that FDS completed successfully. Let's take a look into our simulation directory. Next to the FDS input file, a bunch of output files have been created. With smoke view, we can see an animation of the simulation results. We can simply double click the SMV file and choose the software with which we want to open it. In case you do not see smoke view here, you can choose other apps and at the bottom of the list you can choose a different app on your computer. You then need to connect to SmokeView. You find this in your installation directory. Open SMV6 and select SmokeView.exe. Another terminal window will open and then afterwards a graphical representation of our simulation setup. You can rotate the view by clicking and holding the left mouse button and move the mouse around. For now we did not set up much, so we just see an empty box. Another important parameter for the head name list is the character ID or CHID. You can provide a string here that is used to label the output files. For example, let's just use toast so that we see a clear difference in the file names. Save the file and rerun it. Compared to our previous output, we also see that the job string is now toast. In the previous one, the job ID was simply the file name of the input file. It is repeated again here at the end. Character ID is toast. In the output directory, we see now that a bunch of files have been created that are all labeled toast and then something else. This is used throughout the user guide to indicate where you find specific information that has been produced as FDS output. The CHID can always change, but for example heat release information is always stored in the underscore hrr.csv file. If we had devices located in our simulation, the data that they would record is stored in the CHID underscore devc file, for example. So for the character ID I have now set up a more sensible name, which is just a file name again. The argument could be made that I would not necessarily need to write the character ID if it is just a file name, however I would like to make it explicit which file name should be used for the output. Now let's go on defining our domain. FDS operates on a rectilinear grid. This makes it relatively easy to define geometries. The shape of a rectangular cuboid can simply be defined by two points. The two points are located at two diagonally opposed corners. This is visualized in this image. The first point is in the front at the bottom left corner. The second point is at the back side in the top right hand corner. The parameter for this bounding box is called XB. It is followed by the coordinates of the two points. The structure is as follows. First, the two x values, x1 and x2. This is followed by the two y values, y1 and y2, and then finally z1 and z2. I've put some spaces in between to better distinguish the different blocks. The coordinates for the different points are provided in meters. I would like to set up a domain that has a length along the x and y axis of 1.5 meters and a height of 3.96 meters. I would also like to have it in x and y centered around the origin. Therefore, the x and y values start at negative 0.75 meters and end at positive 0.75 meters. In the z-axis, the domain starts at negative 0.72 meters and ends at positive 3.24 meters. It doesn't really matter how you locate your mesh. You could also, for example, start always at 0, 0, 0 and then extend in 1.5 meters or 3.96 meters directions. However, I would like to focus the origin of the mesh at the top of the gas burner that we will implement later. This makes things a little bit easier because then I can use the center of the burner as a reference point. For example, when I later want to refer to different heights above the gas burner to measure temperatures. You see I have written some text into the input file as a comment. 
This doesn't matter to FTS because again it will just look for the ampersand with four capital letters and the closing slash. Everything else FTS will ignore. It's a good habit to write comments into your input files. For example when you come back at a later point in time you can easily understand what you wanted to achieve. Or if you want to share your input file with somebody else it may be much easier for them to understand what you would like to achieve with your simulation. Next we need to define the fluid cell size. With FTS we cannot directly set the cell size. What we need to do is provide a number of divisions by which each axis is divided. The respective parameter is i, j, k. I would like to have fluid cells that are cubes with 6 cm edge lengths. That makes 25 divisions along the x-axis for the i, 25 divisions along the y-axis for the j, and 66 divisions along the z-axis for the k. We can also provide labels to the different name lists. These are put in quotation marks as a string. Here for example I chose computational domain. We can now save and run the simulation again. Now the overall shape of the domain has changed. Just for comparison, on the right hand side was the original domain, on the left hand side is our new one. To complete setting up the bounds of time and space, now we proceed to the time. This is handled by the time name list. Specifically what we would like to set is the simulation time. This can easily be done by setting the t end parameter. The time that we set here is in seconds. So for our example here, the simulation will run 30 seconds. Just keep in mind, this is the time inside the simulation. This is not the time the computation will take. This will be much much longer. Let's run the simulation again. What we see, the output has changed. The simulation time now runs past one second until it reaches 30 seconds. In the next step, we will bring some fire into the domain. Thank you very much and have a nice day.